Hello, my name is Karen O'Keefe, and today I'm going to demonstrate the use and care of the new Exerton Temporal Artery Thermometer. To start, place your index finger in the center of your forehead, and in a straight line, just draw over to your hairline. You're going to remove your finger and touch your neck just behind your earlobe in that little soft depression. The steps that you just completed is exactly what you need to do to take a temperature with the Exergen thermometer. The superficial temporal artery is in the forehead and varies in exact location from person to person. I suggest you think T for temporal. Draw three straight lines down across your forehead and then cross the T's for the most accurate reading. Do not slide down the side of your face to the temple area. The temple artery lies deeper in the temple area and it'll give you an inaccurate temperature. This is the most common error, of course, that people make because they're thinking temple, temple artery, but the forehead is where the artery lies right below the skin and is the most accessible. If you scan straight across the midline of the forehead to the hairline, you will not miss the temporal artery. So now let me demonstrate. First, you wanna wipe the probe off with an alcohol prep pad. So let me just get my gloves on. Routinely, you don't need to put a protective cover over the top of this because the scanner is not gonna be in contact with mucous membranes. However, if for some reason, such as you have an isolation patient, a probe cap is indicated, but use only the exergen probe caps. Also, there's a plastic sheath that covers the whole device um, that you can pick up at Central Supply, and that covers the whole unit, and so again, it's, it's much safer if you're going into an isolation room. So, we're gonna brush away any hair that's on the forehead, anything behind the ear, you're gonna easily um, be able to access this if you push it all the way first hand. You're gonna depress the button and you're gonna start right in the center and go across to her hairline. Keep the button depressed and go behind her ear. Now you're releasing the button and we're at 99.2. And we'll talk about that. Don't get too excited about that. Okay, we're gonna clean this off. So. The temporal scanner it is going to indicate that you're over the superficial artery by a fast beeping sound. It's very low. I don't know if you could hear it. And it also it has a flashing display. So after you pass the artery, the beeping and the display slow down. So you know that you've passed it over. The touch behind the ear is just to ensure a correct reading. It's not uh, acceptable to just touch the behind the ear, however, okay? Um, you definitely have to do the two-step process, midline of the forehead, over to the hairline, then the touch. So the touch is just a double check um, to be sure that you know your reading is accurate because sometimes you might have a diaphoretic or a sweaty forehead and it's cooler, they say, behind um, the ear. There's really no sweat that collects there. The temporal scanner is going to pinpoint the highest of 3,000 temperatures to, to provide the most accurate temperature possible. It's measuring core temperature, which is about one degree Fahrenheit or a half degree Celsius higher than an oral temperature. So if you find that that reading indicates a fever, you want to recheck the temperature with a new device uh, just to verify prior to calling the physician. You want to be sure to report to the physician this is a temporal reading when you're reporting a fever. We're adjusting to this new measurement and the physicians may need to adjust treatment related to the higher readings. Um, just as a scenario of how this higher reading um, can actually kind of cause a misstep, there was a patient whose temperature was 102 with the exergen thermometer and the physician asked for verification with a rectal thermometer. So the nurse went in and did such, and her reading at that point was 99 Fahrenheit. So the patient was discharged home. Four hours later, the patient came back via EMS with a temperature of 104. And um, you know the patient already obviously was in full-blown sepsis at that point. So it's important um, that what we, you know, 
convey to the doctor that this is a core temperature. Um, a rectal temperature is actually gonna take up to two to four hours to co come up to where this core temperature is already reading. So this is you know, important. Uh, this is what re is reflective in the patient right now. Now, moving on to cleaning and maintaining the probe. You shouldn't use anything that other than alcohol on the tip of the probe because if you use a chemical such as bleach or one of the disinfecting wipes at the hospital, you can actually etch the glass and cause permanent damage, which will give you lower readings. The device itself, you can use any hospital disinfectant wipe on, okay? So you always wanna make sure that you're cleaning everything off. Okay, so as far as um, what powers this device, it's just a nine volt alkaline battery. And if the battery is running low, it's not gonna give you a temperature. It's not gonna give you a reading. So what you're gonna to have to do is just wait for the battery sign to come up on your display. It'll be B-A-T-T, -T, and that's your indication that there's a low battery. So sometimes when we get an off reading, we'll think, oh, maybe it's the battery. With this exergen, that's not gonna be the case. It won't give you reading at all if the battery's running low, um, or it'll display, as I said, with BATT. Otherwise, it's just gonna be a black screen, and that's your indication that it's time to change that battery. So, the nice part about this thermometer is that it's easy to use with an immediate, accurate core temperature. You're gonna be comfortable knowing that this is the latest technology in your hands. So I chose YouTube as my video creation service for this assignment. It was easy to set up a video channel and filming was accomplished with an iPhone and camera. My lecture contains information gathered from a website uh, video and handouts from the nurse professional development team. There were no technological issues, thank goodness, and um, I enjoyed this experience.